Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions, my name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out FFFFFF by developer Daniel Linson, a game that as you can probably tell by the title is actually inspired by Terry Cavanaugh's VVVVVV and as well also is quite inspired by the game Flappy Bird and in fact hails from the Flappy Jam. And I've had quite a few people request a bunch of different games that I should check out from this and in case you don't know what it is, uh, essentially developers were tasked uh, with creating a game that was somewhat inspired by the concept behind Flappy Bird, a very controversial iOS and Android game that led to a developer essentially uh, taking the game down because of all kinds of hate speech and horrible things that were happening, death threats and... Uh, in general, just a really ugly mess of a thing. So essentially, the community gathered together and decided, why don't we just create a whole bunch of games uh, in a similar spirit to kind of just prove the point that, like, this isn't going to be the end-all, be-all sentiment uh, that the community is going to put on us. So I think that was a kind of a positive move. And since I was uh, asked to cover a whole bunch of different ones, I figured, well, I'll pick one of my favorites and why not pick one of the ones that happens to have something to do with uh, a game that I'm already very fond of? And you never, you never know, I might end up playing some others in the future. So why don't we give this a few tries, and I will go over why I think this is a pretty freaking fun game. I think just by virtue of it being inspired by the very addictive Flappy Bird, uh, it's bound to be pretty addictive, but as you can see here, what we're dealing with is essentially we've got Captain Viridian equipped with a beak, uh, and basically going through a series of rooms that happen to be pre-configured but show up in a random uh, fashion. And essentially you need really fast reflexes to be able to uh, parse what exactly is about to happen and then be able to redirect your character in such a way as to not hit the spikes. Uh, obviously the further you make the better. Uh, doesn't happen to be anything in the way of like leaderboards or anything at this point, but this is an extremely addictive game and I have to say if it did have that I might end up spending a ton more time than I actually want to even be spending on this uh, playing it. So as you can see, the concept, uh, very strongly inspired by VVVVVV, as I've already mentioned, uh, but like beyond just the aesthetics, uh, the game actually it basically handles identically, except for the fact that you're on rails here and you can't actually stop moving even if you want to. Uh, also the fact that it's, well, a linear game instead of it being sort of a Metroidvania-style exploration deal, uh, where, you know, the original was that. This one is much more just a, you know, a casual, quick, kind of arcadey experience designed just to test your limits and how quickly you can parse these landscapes. It's, uh, again, very, very addictive. And I have already spent probably about 10 or 15 minutes just playing around with this, and I haven't gotten, I think, over 11 as my best score. I know it's not represented here, but I was playing the HTML version. Uh, before I went and downloaded the EXE version. I have to say, I definitely want to recommend this one, and I'm a little worried to know that there are over 300 other games uh, featured in the Flappy Jam that I could essentially get into, because I think <laughs> seeing the amount of them and how easy it is to get pulled into one of them, if I start doing a gauntlet of them, I'm probably going to spend all of my time uh, just playing these Flappy Jam games, which, you know, may be a good thing. Uh, it probably is a good thing, in fact, but it's uh, going to eat up all of my time, and I can't have that right now. I've got to just stick to a few at a time. So anyway, to get further into this deal, uh, I guess I could probably explain a little bit of what happened with the Flappy Bird scenario and why it's such a problem. Uh, the developer started out, and as far as I know, everything that I've read about him, everything that I've seen, the tweets and everything, seems like a very kind, you know, humble guy, nothing really... Uh, too weird or crazy about the things he's tweeted. He certainly hasn't had any, like, outbursts of insanity or anything like that. Not like, you know, not like I'm going to judge him for it if he did, really, but uh, it's there's been a lot of uh, crazy stuff that's happened in the, the game industry. And this guy, as far as I can tell, certainly isn't out uh, to make waves. He just wanted to do his thing, be a game developer. And, in fact, he wasn't even particularly worried about, uh, you know, success in general, as far as I can tell. He just wanted to just make a game, and he did. Uh, and it started actually a couple of years ago, I think it was back in around November or so, when he started development on uh, what was originally called, I think it was Flap Flap. And eventually got the thing done to a point where he submitted it to the iOS store, it sat there for quite a while, uh, didn't really make any huge progress for, you know, many months, and eventually got moved to a different category in the iOS games uh, categories where eventually more people started seeing it and sharing it. Uh, a few tweets happened to come in, people that were excited, people started writing reviews for the game, 
and little by little it started to pick up a little steam, and uh, as you can imagine, I'm sure the developer was probably pretty thrilled. You know, a game that really wasn't doing much for a long period of time all of a sudden started to be gaining a little bit of traction, uh, people were recognizing it and talking about it, which is kind of like the dream of what I think anybody that's involved in the industry would want, and there's my new high score. That's pretty cool. Uh, and essentially, if you didn't know what the game was, it was very, very simple. If you've ever played one of those helicopter-style games, uh, you've got a bird in this case, and you just basically hit, uh, you tap the screen or hit the space bar, whatever uh, the input method happens to be, uh, wherever you're playing. I'm not aware that there's a PC version, so you're probably not going to be hitting the space bar, but you know what I mean. Uh, and basically, you're just trying to steer the bird through uh, varying height platforms or, or gaps in a, a wall, essentially. Just trying to keep them alive and not smash into stuff, and you get a higher score than your friends on the leaderboards, and, you know, brag about it, get a medal, or so on and so forth. And, you know, that basically drives the competition. Uh, people start wanting to compete with their friends, people talk about it little by little, you know, it creeps up and all of a sudden people take notice and that is kind of what happened in this case. I have trouble with that screen every single time. Uh, but the uh, basically the success built and built over quite a while, eventually it actually started to peek into some of the top 10 categories and then I believe it actually did hit number one, uh, which actually even got a tweet from the uh, App Store from Apple themselves uh, talking about what their score was and, you know, egging people on to play the game. And uh, as far as I'm aware, the thing was actually free, but was generating a bunch of money from ad impressions, I guess, from people running it. Um, I didn't actually play the game myself. I'm operating all completely off of, like, secondhand uh, story here, so this is not entirely uh, something I have, you know, direct experience with, but I did read up a bunch. And uh, essentially, this is just a thing that just went crazy, uh, people started to figure out how much money it was making, and then that triggered a bunch of jealousy, and all kinds of horrible things were being said to this poor developer, and he just wanted to get out of the public eye. He, did, he wasn't ready for all of this junk coming at him all at once, and uh, he did his best to deal with it, and I guess after a while he couldn't take it anymore, and despite the fact that the game was incredibly po uh, popular and was making him a ton of money every single day, uh, he decided to take the game down. And uh, basically, the, the game jam is uh, being put into play here just because I think the, the sentiment is that we just don't want to see that be kind of the end of that story. Uh, in, in a way, that statement sort of said, well, that particular uh, person was so affected by the negativity that it just, you know, kind of took him out in that case. Not that he stopped making games, it's quite to the contrary, he's still making games as far as anybody knows. Uh, it's just that game has been taken off the App Store and is not being played. And it's, in fact, it's very strange. People are actually apparently selling phones with the game installed on it at very high prices on eBay, which I just can't quite wrap my mind around. Uh, but it is what it is. People do some silly things. I, I don't really understand why that's such an important thing. You could very easily probably make a clone of it. Um, I don't think it was the most particularly complex game to generate. I'm sure it still took some work. I'm just saying... Uh, as far as, you know, programmers go, it wasn't exactly like it probably took, you know, millions of lines of code uh, to put together. Anyway, I'm not trying to trash his game now, I'm just saying uh, it wasn't super complex. So I just think that this is kind of a crazy thing, and in a way I sort of relate. Uh, doing YouTube myself, there's quite a bit of criticism that gets thrown around. Um, I do, I'm pretty lucky my community is quite positive, and I try to keep that as the general sentiment uh, amongst my videos and hope to encourage that in my comment section as well, but you know, I have varying degrees of success with that. But I imagine once you start getting death threats, uh, there's sort of a line that's been crossed at that point where it's like, what are you guys doing? You know, this is a game. This is a simple, simple, casual game. What on earth does a death threat have to do with any of that? Like, why would we need to bring that kind of a horrible concept to that yeah, I just can't quite wrap my mind around it. Why would anyone do that? Anyway, it's what happened. It sucks, and I'm really kind of sad that that's what happened to this poor person. And, you know, I think it's cool that everybody's rallied around uh, the concept of getting the word out, and very cool as well that we found something like FFFFFF, which is a really neat reimagining of a game that I already like quite a bit. And as you can tell, it's quite difficult as well, and I kind of like the amount of challenge and the amount of times that I need to keep playing this to sort of experientially uh, be able to read these situations a lot faster. Um, and I could easily see if uh, Terry Cavanaugh was cool with it, like, this would be something I would probably pay for, so uh, probably not a thing that would happen, considering, you know, it's his property and all that, that he very... Uh, that uh, Daniel actually very nearly took, you know, almost directly in concept, but still, 
Uh, it works very well, and I have nothing bad to say about it. It's very casual, it's very addictive, and I think sometimes those things are just fine. I actually play quite a few games on the channel that are more arcadey and a little bit easier to grab uh, and get into that don't require much of any, you know, prep time or learning or, you know, anything uh, in terms of, you know, a learning curve. This is just like, you can play it or you can't play it. There's a little bit of time spent adapting uh, to being able to react fast enough, but for the most part, you get the concept in the first 10 seconds or so, and all you need to do to interact with it is press spacebar. So there's some kind of elegance uh, in the simplicity of something like that, and I have to give my thumbs up for it. Uh, so the developer, again, uh, Daniel Linson, I'm going to probably be covering another one of his games on the channel in a little while, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, but I did just want to do a little bit of a, you know, a mention of the whole Flappy Bird situation and scenario and the Flappy Jam in general. Uh, and I will have links for the game itself as well as uh, the Flappy Jam if you want to go ahead and check out the over 300 games that are available for free over there. There's a few that definitely grab my attention. I'm just, again, a little bit uh, leery of jumping into 300 games that are very easily accessible and I could spend tons of time on. Otherwise, uh, you know, if I do too many of them, the coverage might suffer, and I might just do tons of really simple accessible games, which is not only uh, the only thing that I want to cover on the channel. But anyway, uh, thumbs up to FFF, FFF. I think it's very cool. I wish it had some sound effects and music. I could kind of hear the music, honestly, uh, you know, just from playing so much VVVVVV. I think the music is just sort of there already for me, but, you know, it's a cool thing. I wish it had a little bit more, I wish there was more to it, but it's fun just by itself, just the way it is right now. So go give it a try, let me know what your top score is in the comments, I'd love to hear from you all. And let me know the, what you think about this entire controversy and situation in general. Um, I know there's always two sides to every story, but this is one of those stories that's kind of like, eh, maybe? I kind of just kind of don't think there's too much to it other than what actually happened. But I would love to hear your opinions anyway, uh, and we can keep the dialogue going about it in the comments. So go ahead and check this game out in the description. Let me know what you think about all those things I just mentioned. Uh, see what you can do with the game, and of course check out my other social media stuff uh, right in that description as well. Uh, see if there's any other games you want to check out on my website, indie-impressions.com. Uh, over 650 other episodes that have covered in the series. There's bound to be something for just about everyone, and they're all categorized over there. So if you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like on it. I greatly appreciate that. And of course, if you are enjoying the coverage and want to come back again tomorrow, I do a new episode of Indie Impressions every single day, as well as the various Let's Plays and other things on the channel. So if you're into it, consider subscribing. It helps me out quite a bit. Uh, but no obligation, of course, just if you think that's something for you. So I will catch you again tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely night, everybody.